Pushing boundaries on the big screen is nothing new, but when a 90s hit series started throwing butts around on TV, it was a different story, and it nearly cost millions. Much of what we think of as the golden age of Hollywood was produced under the watchful eye of the Motion Picture Production Code, better known simply as the Hayes Code, after its architect, former Postmaster General Will Hayes. The code, self-imposed by Hollywood to avoid federal censorship, placed strict limitations on nudity, sex, violence, profanity, and even moral ambiguity on screen. But by the early 1960s, the code had lost much of its authority, and in 1963, the modern era of Hollywood nude scenes began with the cruise ship comedy Promises, Promises, starring Jane Mansfield. Yes, I've got to get out of it right away. It's much too tight. You read all about her in Playboy magazine. Now see all of Jane Mansfield, the film's poster exclaimed. And sure enough, Mansfield is topless within the first five minutes. After spending the 1950s in hits like Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter and The Girl Can't Help It, her film career had largely run aground in the new decade. Promises, Promises, and the presumed controversy over its nude scenes has been interpreted by many as an attempt to regain the spotlight. But critics by and large weren't fooled, and most American audiences literally couldn't see what the big fuss was about. As Mansfield's topless scenes were excised by the same regional censorship boards that the Hayes Code was set up to avoid. Director Franco Zeffirelli's 1968 film version of Romeo and Juliet has been a perennial favorite for decades, despite a bedroom scene featuring stars Leonard Whiting and Olivia Hussey in the nude. Zeffirelli uses Shakespeare's text and themes to reflect his own era, exploring teenage rebellion and free love with the help of his young, extremely young, cast. Whiting was 16 years old at the time of filming. Hussey, a stage actor making her film debut, was just 15. The film was a major hit, rescuing Paramount Pictures from financial ruin and transforming Zeffirelli into an international tour. For their trouble, Hussey and Whiting were giving $3,000 apiece in years of trauma. An exhaustive Vulture article from September 2023 details the way the tyrannical Zeffirelli coerced Hussey and Whiting to film the bedroom scene nude. The experience of being in the film and the year-long promotional tour that followed left Hussey with an eating disorder and agoraphobia, but for years she defended the film on its artistic merits and the love that audiences around the world still have for it. Her thinking changed, however, in 2018 when she discovered never-before-seen photos of her and Whiting nude taken during filming on what was supposed to be a closed set. In January 2023, the two actors filed a lawsuit against Paramount, alleging abuse and distribution of child pornography. A judge dismissed the case in May. Child actor Brooke Shields' breakthrough starring role came in Louis Mao's 1978 drama Pretty Baby, a look back at World War I-era New Orleans told from the perspective of a 12-year-old sex worker named Violet. Raised in a brothel by her mother, Violet eventually enters the family business. Her virginity is auctioned off to the highest bidder, and after her mother abandons her for a wealthy John, she falls into a marriage of sorts with an obsessed photographer. The plot may sound salacious, but the film itself is anything but. The Mall and co-writer Polly Platt may have some affection for the music and styles of the era. They also understand that sex work is often boring and dangerous, but rarely sexy. Still, this is a film in which a preteen actor appears in several nude scenes, and for many people, that was a bridge too far. Shield's mother and manager Terry had to defend her daughter and herself against accusations that the film was nothing more than child pornography. If you like, think about the whole thing, it might be a little uncomfortable, but I knew that it was going to be in good taste. Shields went on to make many other films, but Pretty Baby still holds a significant place in not just her filmography, but the public's perception of her. I think I learned how to compartmentalize at such an early age, and it was a, you know, a, a survival technique. When Pretty Baby turned 40 back in 2018, Shields told Vanity Fair that she still considers it the best creative project she's ever been involved with, though she conceded that if she were in her mother's place, she might not have been so quick to sign off on the project. The 1980 horror flick Cannibal Holocaust presents itself as a documentary within a documentary, in which an anthropologist travels to the Amazon in search of a missing film crew but finds nothing but bones and the grisly footage that serves as their last will and testament. Even four decades later, the film's makeup effects are gruesomely convincing, as the documentary crew gets maimed, flayed, and beheaded by the indigenous tribe they came to document. There's a fair amount of National Geographic-style nudity, and two actors appear nude in more graphic scenes. To maintain the illusion that what audiences saw was real, director Rogero Deodato hired unknown actors and had them keep a low public profile. His plan, however, worked a little too well. After the film's premiere, Italian authorities seized the prints and arrested Deodato on obscenity charges. This so-called documentary footage is offensive, it is dishonest, and above all, it is inhuman. When the media couldn't immediately prove that Cannibal Holocaust wasn't a snuff film, the Italian government added a murder charge, too. The actors had to prove to the court that they were still alive before the charges were dropped. Deodato may have beaten a murder rap, but he was fined for the very real animal cruelty depicted on screen, and the film was banned for three years. 
1998, Martin Scorsese finally realized the long-awaited dream project, bringing Nikos Kazantzakis' novel The Last Temptation of Christ to the screen. Starring Willem Dafoe as Jesus, the film foregoes the pomp of Bible epics past in favor of something more intimate, contemporary, and at times, surreal. Harvey Keitel's Judas sounds like a New York tough guy, while Harry Dean Stanton's Paul is a Southern evangelist. The approach would have likely been controversial even if Scorsese hadn't adapted the novel's main conceit, the titular Last Temptation, when Jesus, dying on the cross, receives a vision of his life as a mere mortal. He weds Mary Magdalene, played by Barbara Hershey, raises a family, and grows old in a doomed world that never heard his message. Marriages are consummated, of course, which the film depicts in a scene with Defoe and Hershey. The very idea of Jesus having sex, even within the confines of marriage and even within a fantasy that he and the film ultimately reject, infuriated religious groups around the world. The film was derided as evil and anti-Christian, protested by religious groups of all stripes, and even banned in some countries and by some domestic exhibitors, including Blockbuster Video. In 1989, Hershey told the Chicago Tribune, I expected some controversy with Temptation, but nothing like what happened. While nude scenes in films became largely accepted after the fall of the Hays Code in the late 1960s, television took things a little slower. Brief non-sexual nudity was allowed on the small screen in a few of the prestige miniseries of the 1970s and 80s, but the series that truly paved new roads for what was acceptable on network television was 1993's NYPD Blue. Created by super producer Steven Bochco and future Deadwood creator David Milch, the show spent 12 seasons pushing the envelope and fighting censors, advertisers, and the network. The very first episode features a nude love scene, tastefully obscured by shadows, between David Caruso's veteran detective John Kelly and Amy Brenneman's beat cop Janice LaCalcy. Dennis Franz, as scumbag detective Andy Sipowitz, dropped trowel for a shower scene in season two, and before long, appearing nude on screen became something of a rite of passage for the actors on NYPD Blue. Ultimately, the threats of affiliate boycotts and protests only helped to bolster the show, which was a critical and commercial smash right out of the gate. Every so often, though, NYPD Blue ran into some actual trouble. In 2003, the FCC issued a $1.2 million fine for a nude scene involving actor Charlotte Ross for her nude buttocks, which were visible for seven seconds, according to the complaint. The legal battle over the fine stretched out for nearly a decade before an appeals court finally struck it down in 2011. On a 1996 episode of the sitcom News Radio, eccentric billionaire Jimmy James makes a joke about that sweet girl from Saved by the Bell doing a dirty movie. That sweet girl was actor Elizabeth Berkley, and the dirty movie in question was Paul Verhoeven's Showgirls, the immediately notorious 1995 satire set in the garish world of Las Vegas dancers. It's pretty rare for an actor to take the fall for an entire film. Blame usually falls on the director more than anyone else. But unfortunately, Berkeley became inextricably linked to Showgirls, its infamy, and its box office failure. A news radio joke was an accurate summary of public opinion at the time. What's that? More wisdom? I know that. No, you don't. The film was a riff on All About Eve, with teenage runaway Nomi setting her sights on the reigning queen of the Vegas scene. The NC-17 rating had been introduced just a few years earlier as a replacement for the stigmatized X, and Showgirls was the first studio film to attempt a wide release under that banner. But audiences and exhibitors turned out to be just as gun-shy about NC-17 as they were about X, and the dream of a non-controversial adults-only rating vanished into dust. Berkeley's career was adrift for a few years after Showgirls, but in the 21st century, she has built up a respectable resume on stage and screen. The film, meanwhile, has rightly been recognized as a cult classic. On-set romances are as old as Hollywood itself. When two extremely attractive people are up on screen sharing a heavy love scene or even just a kiss, it's natural to wonder if their relationship was more than strictly professional. In 2001, there were perhaps no hotter stars in Hollywood than Angelina Jolie and Antonio Banderas, who starred together that year in Michael Christopher's steamy noir Original Sin. Banderas plays a turn-of-the-century Cuban plantation owner whose beautiful new mail-order bride, played by Jolie, turns out to be more than she appears. Both stars were married at the time, Jolie to Billy Bob Thornton and Banderas to Melanie Griffith, but rumors arose that the two were carrying on behind the scenes. It is an interesting tale. Some of it is even true. Jolie laughed off the rumors at the time, pointing out that because the twists and turns of the plot were kept under wraps, people latched onto the one thing they could see. Banderas also denied the rumors, and in a 2007 Daily Mail interview, he disabused anyone of the notion that filming love scenes with Jolie was as pleasurable as it looked on screen. I couldn't touch her because she had tattoos everywhere and they had to be covered with makeup, so I had to try to not dislodge it. As the Hayes Code was finally put to rest, a new generation of filmmakers rose to meet the moment. 
But one of the most explicit and controversial films of the era came not from a homegrown new Hollywood auteur, but from an Italian upstart. Bernardo Bertolucci's 1972 drama Last Tango in Paris stars Marlon Brando as Paul, an American expat who channels his grief over his wife's suicide into an increasingly destructive affair with Maria Schneider Jean, a Parisian woman half his age. Paul quickly becomes abusive, leading to a violent finale. One particular scene was notorious in 1972 and has only grown more disturbing in the following decades as more information about the making of the film has come to light. Schneider, who died in 2011, alleged that the scene was not in the script, but rather presented to her on set by Brando and Bertolucci without any warning and that it was tantamount to an actual assault. Bertolucci confirmed Schneider's accusation in a 2013 interview, saying that he and Brando purposely kept her in the dark in order to provoke a more authentic reaction, but denied that his choice could or should be considered an act of sexual violence in itself. Schneider was only 19 at the time of filming. 